everybody, this is Dream, and we have a nice little four-game slate for here on Monday at 6.35 Eastern start time. Uh, these four games are pretty interesting. Uh, two bad teams playing each other in Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. A good team and a bad team in Atlanta and Washington. Two good teams with New York and the Blue Jays. And then a kind of two middle-of-the-road teams in Baltimore and Boston playing. Uh, before I get started in this video, can you make sure to smash that like button and the subscribe button? really does help the channel out, and I really do appreciate it. With that said, uh, let's take a look at the players that we can uh, choose from today. Uh, so to start off with the pitchers, we have four guys that we can take a look at. Kevin Gossman is the first one against the Yankees. Now in two games against the Yankees, he's got 23 and 30 points, uh, fancy points against them, which is actually pretty good. Uh, it's still a little bit risky, but he has seven and nine strikeouts in those two games. So he's an interesting situation, and he's also been pitching pretty well as of late. Uh, then Severino for the Yankees against Toronto. He's had three games against Toronto where he scored 24, 16, and 15 fantasy points, including 6, 8, and 9 strikeouts in those games. I think that uh, both of these guys are not ideal situations, obviously, because Toronto and New York Yankees tend to be good scoring teams. But they are the best two uh, players on the pitching field today. Uh, but I have two other guys to mention. Uh, Bryce Elder is one of them for Atlanta. Now he hasn't been particularly great this season, but in the last, but he's only pitched in, an, he's only started four games, and uh, I believe, and uh, in the last three, he's had 18, 23, and 30 fantasy points. One of those games against Washington, and his one other good start, uh, other kind of decent start, the first game of the year was against Washington as well, where he had 15.2 fantasy points. Now these other games where he started, he didn't do near as good, but they were against. A couple of better teams like San Diego and Texas. Uh, but uh, And he's been good against Miami and Washington this season. So he's kind of an interesting option today just because he's going against a really bad team. But I do think that a couple of the hitters on Washington are going to have some opportunity. And then we're going to look at Ron Z. Contreras. He's one of the safest options on the slate that's cheaper aside from Elder. Uh, in two games against Cincinnati this season, he's got 26 and 12 fantasy points. Both of those games were actually at Cincinnati, which is a harder place for players to pitch at. So I do like him in this particular matchup. It's not super ideal because he doesn't get a ton of strikeouts usually. He's very hit or miss on the strikeout situation. But overall, I still think he's somebody you have to take a look at. And then for the catchers, uh, I have four different options here for you. Adley Rutschman for Baltimore against Boston. He's been averaging 9.5 last 10 with uh, two home runs in, in those games. He's been hitting pretty well, and this game is going to be fairly high scoring, I think. And uh, then we're going to look at the two uh, uh, Atlanta uh, sorry, catchers, Contreras and Darno, both of which are hitting pretty well. Uh, both over 300, both are around 8 fantasy points a game, and both have home run potential in this particular situation. And then for a cheaper option, I have Reese McGuire for Boston. If he does play, he's averaging 8 fantasy points for the last 10 games, including 3 home runs. It is the kind of you know, pitch or catcher I like to put in there when I need to save money. Just somebody who's been hitting the ball well, and there's just not that many guys that have been. Now, if Danny Jansen does start for... Uh, Toronto, he'd also be a good option. He's hitting uh, 7.4 or 321 for the last 10, but he doesn't always start, so uh, we'll have to see about that one. At first base, we have Ryan Mountcastle against Baltimore against, or sorry, for Baltimore against Boston. He's at, he's hitting 300 the last 10, but he hasn't been playing every game. But as you can see, he's had some pretty solid games, but then he's also had a couple duds. But I still think he's in a great spot here, uh, so he's somebody you got to consider. And uh, then Rizzo for the Yankees, he's in a pretty good spot. He's averaging almost 9 fantasy points a game, and he has home run potential in this matchup. And then we'll look at Joey, Joey Menendez for Washington. He's one of the guys that I like for Washington. He's just been hitting the ball extremely well, including in three games against Atlanta. He's had 15.7 fantasy points a game. Uh, and this is the type of situation where I think he has home run potential. He's been hitting the ball extremely well since he came up. He's one of the best young players on that team. At second base, we have Kiki Hernandez. Uh, he hasn't been hitting the ball all that well lately. Six fancy points a game. But he's in a good matchup here, and this is the type of situation I like to utilize him. Plus, he's inexpensive. And then Glebier Torres for the Yankees. He's in a good spot. 
Uh, he's averaging almost 14 fantasy points a game the last 10. He's absolutely just been playing great, and so he's in a really good spot here. And then we're going to look at Kevin Newman uh, for Pittsburgh. Against Cincinnati, he's averaging seven, almost 7 fantasy points a game, and he's been pretty solid against Cincinnati this season. And he's been on a roll late, as of late as well. At third base, we have a few good options. Uh, two expensive guys in Devers and Riley. Devers is averaging almost 8.5 fantasy points a game, and Riley is averaging almost 7 fantasy points a game. Uh, but Riley's been really good against Washington this season, and he has been in a little bit of a slump, but he's been having some pretty good games as of late, starting to hit the ball good again. Uh, then we're going to look at Key Brian Hayes. Now, I don't really expect him to play good defensively, but because uh, he's been slouching in that ma master manner, excuse me. But he's still getting hits, and so he's averaging about 8 fantasy points a game, and that's probably close to what we want with him. We want a little bit more, but we'll take that at his p price point. Josh Donaldson has also been hitting the ball pretty well for the Yankees. He's averaging almost 8.3 fantasy points a game, and he's been pretty solid as of late. As the Yankees have gotten going, uh, they have been scoring some runs lately, and so he's the guy that's been hitting the ball pretty well. Uh, at shortstop, I really only have two good options here, and Xander Bogarts is the first one. Uh, he's averaging about 7 fantasy points a game, which obviously we would like him to be higher than that based on his price. But he's been in a little bit of a slump, but hopefully he can start breaking out of it in this plus matchup game. The other option here is Gunnar Henderson, who's been hitting the ball pretty good lately. Uh, averaging almost 7 fantasy points a game. He's a little bit cheaper than than uh, Xander, but he's been kind of going boomer bust a lot lately. He'd go through a little slump where he was not very good, and then he hit a couple home runs, and then kind of go into another little slump. Uh, but he's in a nice plus matchup here. In the outfielder situation, uh, we have uh, Aaron Judge, obviously, for the Yankees. Uh, this is the type of slate where I might try to fit him in here somehow, just because he, if he can hit some home runs, he's definitely going to be, he's definitely going to pay off. But he's not been great since he got to 60 home runs. Uh, then Cedric Mullins, he's in a pretty good spot here. He's averaging about six and a half fantasy points a game, but he's kind of been, he's been a little bit slumpy as of late. Verdugo for Boston's actually in a pretty good spot here, and he's probably starting to hit the ball again after being in a little bit of a slump. Uh, he's had two really solid games. Springer is another guy I like here for Toronto. Another guy that's hitting the ball extremely well. 300 uh, over the last 10 games, 11.4, and he's got a home run potential written all over him in this particular matchup. Uh, Tommy Pham for the Boston's also in a pretty good spot, and he's been hitting 215. But he's hitting some home runs, and that's what we really want in this particular situation. And this is a really plus matchup game, so you have to take a look at Boston and Baltimore. And then we're going to look at Austin Hayes uh, for Baltimore. Now, he's been hitting the ball not so great lately, but he's still in a plus matchup here. And he's been good against Boston this season. I looked for him to bounce back against this sad pitching. And then Michael Harris, he's just been one of the best players playing in baseball lately, even though he's not hitting as many home runs, uh, he is hitting the ball pretty well at 270, and he has home run potential in this particular matchup against Washington. Uh, team that he's, you know, had 13 fantasy points a game this season in 13 total games. I really like him in this particular matchup. Overall, I think this is a pretty solid matchup. Uh, I did want to mention one more guy here. Where'd he go? Where's the Yankees? Yeah, so Oswaldo Cabrera, he's averaging 11.6 fantasy points a game. And uh, even though he's not been good against Toronto, he's been good lately since the Yankees have got going. But he's kind of been robust, so just be aware of that. But overall, like I said, this slate is pretty short, small. So you're going to have to, you know, pick and choose who you like the best. Uh, but overall, I think this is a pretty easy, uh, interesting slate simply because pitching is going to be very difficult to choose. And especially on DraftKings where you have two pitchers. Uh, you get the benefit on FanDuel of only having to pick one. So I think you probably want to pick one of Gossman or Severino and then one of either Elder or Contreras to really make a decent lineup on this particular slate. Uh, right now I'm probably leaning towards Severino and Elder, but uh, you can make an argument for any of those four. So that, with that said, I want to say again, thank you guys for liking, comment, and subscribing. 
I do want to shout out the Patreon people here real quick. Uh, Gerald P., Patrick B., Andrus B., and Peter E. I really do appreciate you guys joining. And make sure to check out the Discord in the description, everybody. Uh, we're having a lot of fun in there, and so you sh uh, if you're interested in that, then come on and come and join it. So anyway, thank you guys again, and have a nice day, everybody.